Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about java input stream class with the help of examples so guys the input stream class of the java io package is an abstract super class that represents an input stream of bytes so basically the input stream classes helps us in order to read some particular data from a particular file or any other source of data now since the input stream is an abstract class it is not useful by itself but however its sub classes can be used to read the data so basically this input stream it is of the type abstract class so we cannot use the object out of it directly we have to use its sub classes in order to create the objects so basically the sub classes of the input stream are we have file input stream we have byte array input stream we have object input stream as well so guys we are going to check the file input stream with the help of examples we are going to see what are the different methods of the input stream by using the file input stream over here the very first method is going to be the read that is going to read bytes from the stream and stores in a specified array over here so let us check this with the help of example now what i will do over here i have already created a test file over here as you can see in this particular directory if i open this test file it is having this is a test line in a test file so this is the content of this file i'll close this file for now so basically this is the file which is going to be the source file in order to read the content so over here what i will do is i will provide the input stream class which is an abstract class so we have the input stream i provide the name of the object as input followed by new operator and then we have something called as file input stream so guys as you can see there are multiple constructors related to file input stream over here the third constructor it takes a parameter in the form of a string data type so that is what we are going to use and the string is going to be the path of the file which we want to read over here so how do we give the path of the file over here i'll just copy this directory so i'll just copy this and i'll just paste this inside the double quotes over here so inside the double quotes we have this directory that is the path where the file is present and over here at the end i want to give the name of the file guys remember that instead of a single backslash it is using double backslash that is done in order to escape a single backslash over here so we have to use the double backslashes so after this i provide the test file over here that is the name of the file so as you can see this is the name of the file that is test file and then followed by the extension that is txt and then we have a semicolon over here so guys in this way we have initialized the input object over here now we are getting a red underline it says unhandled exception type file not found exception so let me put this inside the try catch block over here so we have the try block over here and then inside the catch block i'll provide the exception so we have the exception class e and then let's say the exception is found and we have to handle it appropriately so we say error and then colon and then we have something called as e dot get message so guys basically in case there is file that is not present in this particular path so it will be an exception for this particular program so in this case the control flow will go to this catch block and the exception will be handled appropriately in order to let the user know about this now what we will do is we will use the various methods of the input stream the very first method is going to be available so it is going to return the number of bytes available in the input stream so let us check this with the help of example over here so we use input object over here we have input followed by dot and then we have something called as available as you can see it returns an integer value so we have to use this method and we have to provide an integer variable over here to catch that value so we have int followed by we give the name of the variable as count that's because it is going to count the number of bytes present in this input stream now guys let us say i want to print that count so we have print statement over here and inside this we will have count and then followed by plus and then we have the count variable so let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see count is 35 now guys this count is equal to the number of characters that are present inside this test file so as you can see each character over here it is of a one byte that is 8 bit and that is what is being printed over there that how many bytes are present in this file there are total 35 bytes in this file and that is what is being printed over here 
now guys i want to read the content of the file so how will i do that i will provide the input object followed by dot and then we have something called as read now guys inside this read there are multiple methods so we are going to use this second method which takes one parameter which is of the type the arrays of byte over here so guys i'll provide the second method over here and before that what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the byte array. So we have byte array and then we provide the name of the variable as the content over here. It is equal to new and then we have the byte and then we have to specify the array size. So the maximum size, let's say I want to provide it as 100. That's because it is less than 100. The byte set up present is 35 over here. So basically I'm going to provide this name of the variable that is content as the parameter inside this read method. Now this is done so that the read method, it will read the content of the file and it will store it in a particular variable. And in this case, the variable is content over here. So I'll provide a semicolon. Now in order to print this content, what I will do is I will convert it into a string. So I will have the string followed by the variable name. So let's say we have file content over here. It is equal to new string. And then inside this new string, as you can see on the second method, we have the parameter of the array of bytes. So I'm going to provide the content since it is having the array of bytes over here. And then we have semicolon. And then after this, we can easily print the content of the file by using this file content string. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the print statement over here and I will provide file content and then colon. And then we have file content as the name of the variable, which is having the content of the file over here. Now, let me just save this file and try running this code now. So as you can see, it says count it is equal to 35 and file content it is displaying. This is a test line in a test file. The same string is present in that file. So if I open this file once again, it is showing this is a test line in a test file. So let me put some more lines over here. I'll put this is another test line and let me just save this and close this now if i want to run this program once again then the updated content should be displayed over here so let me just run this code once again for you so as you can see this is a test line in a test file and then i'll scroll this little bit this is another test line so the updated content of the file is getting printed over here and guys in this way we can easily use the input stream we can use the file input stream class along with it we provide the path of the file that we want to read we can also use the available method in order to count the number of characters that are present in a particular file content and after that we can use the read method over here using the input object now the read method it takes one parameter which is going to be the array of bytes so we have provided the array of bytes variable over here and that variable is being converted into string by using the string constructor and we are providing the content that is the array of bytes over here to the string constructor and storing the content in a particular string and that string we are printing over here as the file content guys over here if you notice the count of the characters have been increased to 61 over here that's because we have added another statement that is this is another test line over here now guys apart from this it is very important that you use this method that is close which closes the input stream so at the end of the program since you have opened the input stream using this file input stream you have to use this object that is input in order to close the file so what we are going to do is we are going to use use this object that is input followed by dot and then we have something called as close it is not going to return anything but it is a best practice that we close the file so that we can optimize the memory and then after this we can simply print the statement that the file has been closed over here let me just save this file and try running this code now so we have count is 61 and then file content the content of the file is being printed over here and then we have the statement that is the file has been closed after actually closing this file using the input object so guys that's it in this video make sure that you practice on your own so that on different contents of the file you get the different outputs you can also use the other methods as well so over here if we use the input object followed by dot you can see many other methods are present in order to get different properties of 
of the file that we have opened over here so guys that's it in this video please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well the next video that we are going to talk about is java output stream class with the help of examples so stay tuned